Hello one and all, welcome to Seeing Through Glass. I'm just about to arrive at DK Engineering, one of my favorite car places in the world. I'm going there to check out two very special and one pretty damn rare Ferraris. Yeah, you know today is gonna be a very good day. Every time I come down here to DK Engineering, I never want to leave. This place is just so amazing. And how incredible does this courtyard look now that I have the two cars I've come to focus on today parked in it. Now, those of you that aren't kind of Ferrari obsessives or even sort of enthusiasts may be looking over my shoulder going, Sam, that's just a, a red and a blue 599. But no, you are wrong because these are two incredibly special 599s that are equally as kind of rare or valuable or maybe even significant because of their paint and more so their specification. Let me explain more. We will kick things off then with the car on the left, because if I'm honest, this is the car that I've really been excited to check out today. This is an exceptionally rare, quite quirky, and pretty niche Ferrari. This is the 599 GTB 60 F1 with the Alonso livery, often kind of misnamed or miscalled the Alonso edition. That's not correct. This car was a super limited run celebrating 60 years of victories for Ferrari in Formula One. Essentially, at the end of 2011, Ferrari suddenly realized that their first victory in 1951 with a driver called Gonzalez was at the British Grand Prix at Silverstone. And 60 years later, their most recent victory to that point was also at the British Grand Prix at Silverstone when Fernando Alonso claimed their only win that year. So yes, they went, oh, well, that's quite a cool thing to have realized. Let's celebrate it with the final few 599s being made with these kind of commemorative cars. Now, fundamentally, the cars are 599 GTBs with the HGTE hand pack. So mechanically, they're not that special. Quick interruption, I'm currently editing this video and I've realized that I keep saying special when I mean rare. So by saying that a 599 HGTE isn't special makes me seem a bit stupid. I meant isn't that rare. And this is gonna happen a lot. I keep saying special when I mean rare. I, I needed to clarify that. Anyway, back to the video. The handling pack basically stiffened up suspension and anti-roll bars, made the gears change a little bit quicker, added a sports exhaust, some lightweight wheels, carbon ceramic brakes, etc. Why do people often call this the Alonso edition? Well, that's because even though the 60F1 was offered with three different liveries, I would say of the 40 cars, probably 30 plus were bought with this Alonso version. The other two were a Gonzalez livery, which essentially took inspiration from that 1951 first victory in a three 75 F1, which was a super nice dark kind of maroon red, the historic Ferrari F1 red with hand painted shields, and then these same sort of big old FF basically wheels on the car. Uh, aside from this Alonso edition, there was also an F150 livery, which was celebrating the sort of car that won their latest victory. Very similar to this spec, however, it had just this front white bumper or, or lip, the rest of the sort of white decals disappeared. Um, but yeah, most people went with this version, which is why most people call this car the Alonso edition. All of these kind of decals, all of these elements that you see, all the sort of white bits and the badges that I'll point out in a second, are all painted. They're not stickers, they're all painted. I mean, if I come here and very carefully run my finger over that line, you can't feel a thing hand painted, absolutely unbelievable detail. And on the side you've got these massive Scuderia shields. I mean, they really are huge. They look a tiny bit out of place, but I kind of also love them. And as you move along side the car, you've got this Scuderia Ferrari badge, which was the team logo at the time again, painted and then this Alonso's signature. I'm pretty sure all of the Alon all of the Alonso liveried cars got a signature. I'm not sure if that's underneath the clear coat of the paint or not. I'm too nervous to touch it, um, but very, very cool to see. And as we make our way around the back, you get the sort of tricolore of the Italian flag just on that kind of rear boot lip, I guess you could call it. Inside, firstly, these seats have this kind of special material which helps kind of really grab you and hold you in place. But then you also get these kind of nuts, harnesses. I'm not really sure why 
their blue and red maybe the guys at DK know a bit more about that but yeah pretty crazy to see and these absolutely huge Ferrari shields on the headrests but then what I love is actually over here on the dashboard firstly have you noticed the white carbon and this is back in 2011 very early for colored carbon fiber but how special does that look and then talking about special look at the badge that denotes that it is a 60 f1 edition kind of historic looking 1951 2011 so so cool as is the 31 formula one world titles badge super special to see and speaking of special to see then we have to move on to the second car that i'm looking at today which is this stunning tailor-made 599 gto so i think nowadays people are fairly familiar with the tailor-made program almost all manufacturers are offering these kind of highly bespoke customizable programs for their cars so you can choose whatever color you want to choose and different interior trims and you can just go mad but this was very very early in the days of tailor-made actually so early that it wasn't called tailor-made when this car was created but the list of sort of options and things on this car is so long that i'm actually i know i'm going to forget various elements wait till you see this interior because oh my god talking of colored carbon fiber look at the blue colored carbon fiber how unbelievable does this look and then weirdly the seat pattern from a 458 so just sort of bespoke details that you wouldn't really think about but the owner clearly has and even the seat belts are in this stunning dark blue and actually this leather you can't really see it, it looks gray or black here but that's actually a very dark blue leather as well so the whole car does really tie in close that door there you come around the back got a beautiful black ferrari badge on the boot and then this lovely carbon fiber elements down here this thing in person on a day like today is probably arguably the best spec gto i think i've ever seen i am obsessed with it now as you can imagine the rareness of these two cars makes them insanely valuable and of course the gto always a valuable car but for the 60 f1 edition you need to expect to pay three four times more than a sort of standard 509 gtb with that hgte pack why well because of rareness it's an insanely collectible Ferrari but also even though it's not called the Alonso edition the fact that people refer to it as the Alonso edition basically makes it the kind of only Ferrari named after or called after a Formula One driver there have been a few sort of cars that have been linked to Michael Schumacher and other drivers over the years but I think that has something to do with that inherent value even though Alonso wasn't an F1 champion with Ferrari there's just something about the fact that it is referred to by that name that I think adds to the hype and to the value. But fundamentally, as I say, it's the fact that it's one of 40 in the world and Ferrari collectors know that and love that. And I don't blame them because rare cars, in my mind, are always cool. What is also cool, undeniably insanely cool, is that today I'm not just down here checking out these cars. DK Engineering said I could very kindly, very quickly have a go in both. Well, I come five minutes down the road and first up, it's the GTO. This thing is just stunning. I mean, it was amazing in the courtyard at DK Engineering, but now seeing it out here on public roads, I'm like, I just, I need this. I can't afford it, but I need it. Uh, you will have noticed it's a left-hand drive car. Uh, this car was originally delivered to Japan, has now ended up back here in the UK. Uh, essentially, because I mentioned that this was kind of early on in the tailor-made program, very few 599 GTOs were allowed to be sort of put through the tailor-made process. If you know anything about Ferrari, you'll know it's all about sort of VIP status or your status within the Ferrari customer base. And so only a handful of people were offered the chance to buy a GTO, supposedly only 499 made, and even fewer of those 499 people were allowed the chance to put their car through the new tailor-made program. Uh, yeah, so this thing is just mind-boggling. Sitting in here right now, the blue carbon is incredible. It really lifts the kind of experience. Firstly, this car is stunningly prepared and immaculate as all DK engineering cars are. Yes, you can see this this blue paint, which by the way, I'm not gonna be able to pronounce the Italian. It's like extra campanile. It's blue Ghibli cup, essentially celebrating the Maserati Ghibli cup, which Luca de Montezemolo, the old CEO of Ferrari created. This is the color from that. Uh, it's blue Scoro, I think either for the, maybe it's blue Scoro, for the carbon fiber but also i mentioned the leather is blue and then it's 
got a bit of gray stitching. There's so much to talk about. It's got a white rev counter. It's really nice that the actual sort of writing on the blue carbon fiber for the paddles is kind of bluish as well. And it adds everything. It's just incredible. But let's face it, as beautiful as this thing looks, we're also celebrating the fact it's a GTO. <laughs> That's pretty special. So ignition, oh no, sorry, ignition on. Get my brain in gear, Sam. Definitely windows down. Maybe race mode, is that a bit cheeky? Oh, low fuel. Well, we're not going far anyway. This car's only got three and a bit thousand miles on the clock. So yeah, we're really not going far. <laughs> yes, I love you. Honestly, naturally aspirated V12, but in a Ferrari, win, win, win. Uh, let's come out of auto, manual. We really don't have a lot of fuel. Probably should have looked into that. Anyway, uh, now the thing which I, I mean, I've driven a GTO before, and the thing which I forgot then, and I need to remind myself now, is this thing is a monster, and with cold-ish tires and semi-cold temps, got to go really, really easy, but I do still want to kind of make some noise, so. Bloody hell! <laughs> this is just so glorious. to this era of Ferrari and this era of V12 Ferrari. I mean, those cyclists heard me coming from about four miles away. They weren't happy with me, but get over it, guys. Idiot. <laughs> Tell like that was a mistake. <laughs> it's so loud. Oh, you don't realize sitting here how loud it is. It's as good to drive as it is to look at. Those two don't always marry up, but it really does with this car. Okay, one last blast. Now, I'm sure you're probably thinking there's no way that Sam can get in a GTB after a GTO and be like, this is even better. It, I mean, it's not going to be, but I do like weird things. And the fact that this car has harnesses and a special badge and this lovely white carbon dash, and I know how rare it is, it does get me quite excited. <laughs> and yes, dynamically, it's never going to be quite like the GTO, but it's still a 599, it's still a Ferrari, it's still natural aspirated, and it's still special. I think throughout this video, I've got that wording wrong. I keep using special when I mean rare. All Ferraris are special in my mind, but what makes these cars rare are the things that I've spoken to you about. Um, now, let's put this in and see if I can turn on the ignition. Because, interestingly, this car has 162 miles on the clock. 162 miles ever that's it that's not it i mean there's that delivery mileage i don't know but i'm basically driving this from one part of deke engineering to another part we're not exactly going on a hoon and i'm definitely not going above 3000 rpm but you know it seemed a shame to drive one and not drive the other so that's what i'm going to be doing and as i say look fine it's not a gto but in my mind a weirdo like me who likes bizarre weird quirky ferraris it's, it's pretty special 5.9 is such a weird one. I think it's aging so well. I think it's stunning. I think it's beautiful. I, I've never loved driving the standard GTB cars. I find it a tiny bit floaty and the gearbox a bit lethargic. And hey, it's a car for Grand Touring, hence the name. Grand Touring Berlinetta, I'm pretty sure is what GTB stands for. Um, but I don't know, it's so night and day from that GTO, which is so sharp and on point and raw and raucous. This just feels a little bit older, weirdly, whenever I get in them, even though that this one is brand new. <laughs> I've, got to just, I've got to take in the moment right now. I've got to enjoy 
the moment for what it is because this will never happen again. I am never gonna drive a 60F1 again, I don't think, because they're so rare, and I'm definitely never gonna drive a new 599 again. Imagine if I just collected this. It is getting warm in here though. <laughs> what a day, I told you. I love coming to DK Engineering. God, I love Ferrari. Well, two very different, but equally amazing 599 and Ferrari experiences right there. Huge thanks to DK Engineering, absolute legends for letting me check out those cars. I love coming down here and just nerding out, and that's what I really felt like I got to do today. Uh, I think I'm gonna know the answer, but let me know below which would you had, the GTO or the 60 F1. Yeah, I'm pretty sure which way you're gonna vote, but <laughs> anyway, the Alonso livery car, it's a collector's thing. It's a it's a real collector's car, one for the sort of, you know, true aficionados, I suppose, all the people who want the next LaFerrari slots I need to show off to the Ferrari list, but I also quite like it because of that. So anyway, give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it, and make sure you stay subscribed for plenty more videos to come.